Hello everyone, my name is Fatih Bali and I will be presenting our work Swap and Rotate. So the goal of our work is to minimize the ASIC area of block ciphers. As many of you already know that the, the ongoing NIST uh, competition for lightweight cryptography, um, the goal is to de design an authenticated encryption primitive that is small and lightweight. And among uh, 32 candidates that are still active as of the second round, 15 of them are actually based on block ciphers. That means that it is still an active trend to take a block cipher and define a mode of operation and then hence get an authentic authenticated encryption primitive. And among them, GIFT is quite popular as a choice for block cipher uh, as four of the candidates are already using it. So in that sense, this paper provides the smallest uh, GIFT and present implementations and more, more co concretely the 64-bit block variants um, among those family of block ciphers. Um, so the question is the is whether there are novel design ideas that will further improve uh, the reduction in this uh, footprint of block ciphers. And that is the answer we give in this paper. Uh, before that, we have to understand the trend towards reduction in the data path size. That is, if you take uh, the AES as an example, uh, if you look uh, almost from two, dec two decades ago, uh, the implementation from, from by Sato was uh, 5400 gates, equ gate equivalent, normalized so that the, uh, the differences between libraries are uh, somewhat reduced. And then as we go towards 8-bit and 1-bit implementations, we naturally see reduction in the area because the auxiliary gates such as the XOR for key addition or MAX for choosing signals, uh, we can uh, dispense with them as we uh, go lower in the data path size. And before this work, the state-of-the-art smallest implementations for the particular uh, block ciphers, namely for 1-bit present implementation, that is encryption on the circuit, was by Moradi in 2017 and for a combined present implementation it was by Banig and then for there was also uh, encryption only give circuit by Banig as well and in comparison our paper provides much smaller implementations uh, namely we provide both encryption only and then encryption decryption circuits for both of them and among them I think is the most impressive one is the one bit encryption only present implementation which is uh, smaller than 700 gate equivalents. So I will explain how do we actually make this uh, gain. First, uh, I have to uh, give a very uh, brief summary on why we have chosen the gift and present as the block ciphers on this paper. Well, because uh, they are SPN uh, block ciphers, meaning that they consist of substitution and permutation layers. Uh, what is Especially different with these block ciphers in the permutation layer is that the permutation is defined in the one bit uh, sense. Uh, that means that um, there is a permutation function or a table, as you see in this in this uh, in this uh, picture. Um, there is a specific um, instruction to move each bit position i to what is given as pi. For example, the bit at position zero is supposed to be remain same. But bit at position is supposed to go to 16 and then the bit at position is supposed to go to bit position 32 after the application of the permutation layer at each round of the encryption. That is different than what is happening for example in AES or Skinny because there we have a shift rows which is uh, operating on the byte level. Uh, so the handicap of this type of permutation uh, is that it is harder to implement in a one bit a serialized uh, hardware implementation. Uh, that is happening because uh, the bits in general in a one bit implementation are, are arranged in a pipeline fashion, meaning that the bits are coming as an input from this uh, flip flop denoted with 00, zero and then they move all the way towards uh, to 63 and then they finally exit the pipeline. At the exit of the pipeline, you typically have some kind of key addition and then the, the next, the, the fresh bit is fed back again to the pipeline. And that is how a round is typically implemented. So the way to implement a permutation on top of such an architecture is um, a trivial solution basically is to add max before each of these um, 
flip-flops so that we can either choose the default rotation operation or alternatively you can choose this pi values uh, so for example if the bit as position 24 is going to 63 then we would put an extra wire from here to there that would be the trivial solution but that is quite expensive and that would mitigate almost all of the gain that we would gain by uh, using the one bit serial implementation so we have to do better than this uh, that that is um, where the swaps comes into play in our work uh, swap is a very basic primitive introduced on top of the pipeline so the pipeline consists of a basic rotation operation so here um, at each clock cycle you can assume that the contents of these flip-flops are rotated by one and now we will have a swap operation and swap here we denote with the pink color it allows us to um, exchange these two contents just before the rotation so we can either do the rotation on this pipeline or alternatively if we choose to enable we can first swap the b1 and b0 values and then apply the rotation this can be easily done by putting boxes after these uh, colored boxes and then wiring them from b1 to here and then from b0 output um, to here that can be easily done as you can see so that requires only two boxes the interesting observation from a theoretical perspective is that once you introduce a swap um, such as 0 1 and then you already have a rotation operation you can basically execute any permutation uh, as long as you are give, you are given a sufficient log, long number of clock cycles that means that you can derive a very large sequence of operations which eventually does whatever permutation you want uh, before moving on to that part let's look at a very sw sw simple example of how swaps work here assume that these symbols uh, these numbers uh, 3 to 0 are stored at the beginning in these uh, flip-flops and then we want to achieve a permutation it just uh, obtains this uh, arrangement this is basically uh, just rotation by one and then assume that we want to obtain it after four clock cycles well we can do uh, we can use this swap operation as follows we can first do swap and rotate during which we first imagine that there's a swap between b1 and b0 so that the values that are contained are, are exchanged and then later this value is completely uh, rotated by one and then the next step we do the same we just uh, swap these two values and then we rotate so after the rotation as you can see everything is in place and then one, once more we rot, uh, swap these two and then at the final step we just rotate and then we eventually arrive to this value in four clock cycles well that is a very simple example so let's look at a more uh, involved one so here um, assume that you want to do some transposition over a matrix and in this case assume again that the pipeline entries are from here and then they exit from here and um, in this example of transposition what we want to have is basically um, swapping these two values swapping these two values and so on and for so forth so there's some kind of diagonal um, change in the position of the of the symbols or the numbers whatever we call them so here we will actually make uh, three full rounds meaning that each of these rounds consists of 16 different executions of either swap and rotate or just a simple rotate operations so there uh, we will use the first round to fix the positions of for example here 14 and uh, of course the swap here is denoted with this green color so this allows you to exchange any pair of bits that are aligned in this fashion so you can exchange this one and then the next clock cycle because each of the bits will move you can exchange these two and so on and so forth and that is how it goes so you have this diagonal kind of exchange power here swapping power here so here the first pass first round we actually fix as you can see the position of 14 with respect to the final result we also use this to move 13 all the way from the bottom row to its actual correct row and then similarly 12 moves here so essentially all of these values are fine now so we just fix all of them but now you have kind of things that you have to fix more in these uh, diagonals so there we use the second round again and then this uh, positional swap again as you can see and then this sequence allows us to obtain this matrix value and then here you have even this uh, row and then this value is correct and then the last one that is incorrect is 6 and 3 and then we use the last one simply 
to um, to do this one. And that is how we could actually do this uh, transposition operation. Well, the transposition does not really represent what the present is doing. So that in the present case, uh, like I said before, we can just take it as an arbitrary permutation. And on top of that, we can um, pick one swap and then we can derive a sequence of swap and rotates. And then we can look how many cycles does it does it take? It, it takes. So in this case, it turns out that this uh, is not quite useful because executing just a single permutation on top of these bits take uh, 1472 cycles, which is way too large. In comparison, you would expect something like 64 because 64 is the number of cycles just to rotate everything by 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 one completely. So this leads to quite uh, very high latency and on top of that it is also quite larger than the previous implementations of present and gift only because the sequence of operations need to be stored somehow and that uh, sequence is not um, repetitive so what we can do naturally is to add few more swaps because as you can see the swaps have some kind of power and that by adding different variants of swaps we can um, enhance our expression in, in, in defining this permutation. So here the goal is to add some um, permutations and then create some kind of trade-off between the number of cycles and then the number of trade the number of subs that we add. So let's uh, again look at the previous example but this time we add one more swap operation. So this allows us to swap uh, by position of two instead of position one before we had this one. So naturally you can see that by uh, in order to fix the position of 7 and 13 in this uh, transposition operation, we can directly use the swap operation denoted by purple. And if you wait sufficient number of clock cycles so that the elements denoted by 2 and 8 arrive to this exact positions and then we enable the swap again, we can also fix this one. So here uh, we use the purple one for this one and even for this large one we can use the power of purple to make two jumps at a time. And eventually this leads us to um, a, a better result in terms of the number of clock cycles we can, because we can complete the full transposition in two runs now. Well, we can add one more with distance 3 so that we can actually complete everything at once. Here we can actually execute all of these three swaps simultaneously because there is no reason there is no reason to prevent that in the circuit level we can just do all of them at once and then rotate by one um, which is uh, coming naturally with the swap operation and then uh, we can complete everything in one round so as you can see adding introducing a few more swaps allow us to reduce the number of clock cycles well we have seen the transpositions but the present permutation and then the gift permutations are not transpositions they look much more arbitrary. Well, the truth is that the these permutations have some kind of structure embedded in them. So we just have to look for some kind of composition of permutations so that we can do them much easily with the swaps. So in this in this case, it turns out that for example, if you look at the the initial nibble here, 0 to 3, and look at the nib position of them, it marks 0, 16, 32 and 48. You just take this nibble here and then put them vertically here in the new version after the execution of the permutation. Similarly, you take this next nibble and then put it vertically here. And then it goes like this. You take this nibble and then you put them here. So this is the structure that you have. So this could actually be done instead by defining these um, four different matrices, each of them containing 16 of the bits. And then over them, we can execute the transposition that I have shown in the previous slide and then later we just have to do some additional fix because uh, these each of these uh, vertical columns they wouldn't actually be in the in the exact positions that we wanted so we have to do some extra uh, permutation which is um, fortunately something we can do easily with swaps again so this is the case of present so this allows us to um, find a sequence of um, operations swap and rotate operations uh, if you carefully choose the positions of swaps so here we have chosen as you can see um, two different swap operations 
and two different swap operations allow us to complete the full present permutation in six rounds and each round has different decomposition of, of the sequence and in the case of four swaps so if we increase our power by adding two more swaps we can uh, make it even shorter by four rounds meaning uh, four times 64 clock cycles and if you add two more and use six in total we can actually complete everything in two rounds so there we use the first round to first execute the transposition layer of the permutation and then the second round to uh, fix the positions of the columns. How about the gift? Gift doesn't have the exact same permutation, but we can use still the same technique and um, divide the permutation into the two different layers. One of them is still looking like a transposition with the difference of bits being chosen um, from more inter uh, with a fashion of interval between them by jumping uh, by four positions and then we just take um, the transposition of transposition of these bits and then later there is an, another permutation to fix the positions of the vertical uh, columns again so the same idea works for gift and in the case of gift we actually come up with more efficient sequences uh, so the two swaps allow us to complete everything in five round and then the four swaps allow us to complete everything in three and then five swaps is sufficient to complete everything in two rounds so this gives us 128 clock cycles and then it only requires five swaps meaning uh, 10 boxes in circuit much shorter than a uh, 64 you would have had otherwise with the straightforward technique so now the more important question and then the more harder part is to push even further so that we reduce everything to one round so the one round could be important because in a one bit serial implementation you already have to run run a full round because you have to do key additions so if you complete even the permutation in 64 clock cycles they would be perfectly synchronized and then you basically wouldn't spend extra clock cycles uh, for the permutation layer at all so that that is something quite um, novel in this uh, in this work because the previous papers the previous works uh, they always have to freeze the pipeline or ha they have to somehow uh, use another um, uh, latency required approach to resolve uh, the permutation layers in this case we find a very good uh, way to interleave these swap operations so that they are, can actually be completed in 64 clock cycles so here uh, we have actually not only for encryption we actually have the decryption as well meaning that we not only for the forward decryption of the permutation layer we have the solutions but we also have the um, the decomposition of permutations for the inverse of the permutations for both present and gift and in both cases you can see there are uh, six different swap operations introduced in the circuit uh, so just to uh, recap the benefits of our, of our approach we um, can resolve the dependencies uh, between these two um, decomposition of layers in the permutation layer and then we can interleave, interleave them completely so that it is complete it's possible to do everything in one round and then uh, the benefit is that the pipeline is continuously active so you do not have to use extra clock gating techniques which are hard uh, in practice and you do not have to do freezing which which would require um, something like enable signal in the flip-flops which uh, lead to larger flip-flop sizes um, of course there's an extra challenge here which is the uh, position of positioning of SPACs and the key addition which we already which we also resolved in this paper and then the the last benefit um, is that if you want to go from encryption on the circuit to encryption and decryption combined circuit the transition is much more simple and then you only need to add very few number of gates because you can use we can reuse the same swaps um, to execute the inverse of the permutations so this is uh, what the encryption and decryption combined present circuit would look like in this case uh, the top of the circuit is the state pipeline and there you have the blue swaps and then the green swaps so the green swaps are the ones uh, as you have seen in the uh, previous slides there was a transposition which we could have done with the three swaps operation in one uh, one pass and here that's exactly what is happening so the green are, green ones are actually executing the uh, the, tr the transposition layer of the permutation and then later you have the blue which is just basically fixing the uh, 
the, the relative, relative positioning of the columns. And bottom part is the key pipeline there we don't have uh, any need for swaps and then the rest is basically as far as controller circuit and then the key addition part. So if uh, I summarize our results, so we obtain a much smaller present and gift 64 bit variant implementations by using this new technique of swaps, which allows us to make further gains in the permutation layers by introducing this new technique. So there uh, you see, uh, we obtain uh, these results, which is uh, 694. As you can see here, uh, using one swap is actually not quite efficient, not smaller than the previous ones. But uh, one thing that one should notice is that the difference between ED version encryption and decryption combined and an encryption only circuit is quite small. That is, uh, and then this growth is basically coming from the fact that you have to do inverse S bugs and then you have to do some more uh, complicated things in the key scheduling part uh, because of the inverse key scheduling. In the case of GIFT, you have again the smallest uh, results. And not only those are smallest, these are actually faster per round as well. If you compare, for example, this one with the previous work, you can see that this is actually compiling around even faster, uh, in a faster fashion. The same goes for the gift as well. As you can see, this is 64 uh, versus 96. Uh, our results are also extended later into a gift 128 version, which is actually the version that is used quite frequently in the, in the NIST competition. And uh, it is also extended to Skinny and NES because they are also quite popular in among these 15 uh, NIST candidates as well. Uh, thank you very much for your time.